Hey guys, it's Andy here again for our March 2024 production updates. This time around, you probably noticed that we didn't post the video at the start of March because I've been away for the past month and I just got back two days ago. Just for like why I was away, uh, I went to China for the first time and I have to tell everyone I'm not Chinese because people just assume I'm Chinese and then that I went to China to because I was there from there, but I'm not actually from there. There was a couple of reasons I went. One was sort of as a workation. Uh, I went to see some of the factories that we work with to make some of the parts, spend time with my friend and his family for Chinese New Year. And so, yeah, it was a pretty good trip. It opened up my eyes on kind of like another universe, I guess. Uh, Canada's like a really small, population country, whereas China has like 30 times more people. Getting an idea of how business works there, the context of like production, the scale, the technology, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I guess we'll get started with some updates. Uh, first update is long for Long Mill. We had put a pause on production for Long Mills for a little bit because we were waiting on controllers to arrive. The controllers have arrived now, so we have started doing production and packing and shipping machines. For that, we are waiting on some more controller parts to come in. So uh, probably n next week we'll run out of controllers, but we will get another batch of controllers probably by the time we run out. Otherwise, we're wrapping up batch eight uh, long mills. We're going into batch nine production. So we placed uh, orders and started production for parts for uh, the next 1,500 long mills. The laser beam, in the Vortex are shipping as usual. Uh, Ikena and Abeku have developed a new riser mount for the laser beam, which allows you to use the Vortex and the laser beam together to do laser engravings. If you go to the blog, you can check out the video. Um, and I should also reiterate, if you want to learn more about the stuff I'm talking about, we have links, co more content, videos, all that sort of stuff on the blog. So make sure to email, sign up with your email for the blog and check out all the cool stuff that's on there. There's a video on what, how to put together the, 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 the riser mount so that you can move around your laser so that you can do the, the engraving stuff. The Vortex uh, continues to ship as usual. We are in batch two now. So batch one was 300 Vortexes and now we're in, on the next 300 and so that's continuing on. So a lot of information for the alt mill. So we got all the parts in to make our first prototype. You guys have probably seen videos on testing for the alt mill. Daniel's posted the update for all the things we were working on. So make sure to check out that video, which is on the blog and on our YouTube channel. We've gotten a lot of attention from the alt mill project so far, and it's wrapping up to be a pretty big deal, I think, in the hobbyist space because the machine is faster and more powerful than pretty much everything that's in its range. We also have some videos on the testing of the machine, so you can see it cutting some aluminum and basically like going full bore on plywood. On top of that, we're doing some more projects and more testing to push the capability of the, the alt mill and just some like general things that kind of illustrate What's we're, what we're dealing with is one, we've tested the alt mill with 1.5 kilowatt and 2.2 kilowatt spindles. That's been, become one of the bottlenecks where the spindle just can't keep up. And also we're snapping bits just because we're cutting so fast. Yeah, we're pushing around 600 inches per minute uh, for cutting and we can move it even faster, but we'll probably not run it at that speed in, in final production partially for safety. One of the things uh, that I'm sharing here is some of Daniel's notes about the rigidity of the machine. One of the ways that we kind of contextualize how rigid a machine is, is measuring the deflection on each of the axes, basically by putting a load against the tool, like so the end mill, pushing against it at a certain force and seeing how much it moves by. It kind of gives a good idea on how much deflection you should expect from the machine. When your machine is cutting into a material, the force against the bit is going to move it to make the part slightly less accurate than it's going to be. So you can get a context of how much bigger or how much smaller a part might be depending on the way you're cutting it. I know it's not really like the best explanation, but we'll probably have some more content come out that kind of 
delves into this a little more. And we also have more content that we've done testing for the long mill. So if you want to check that out on the blog or on our YouTube channel, you can find videos on that too. We get about 0.0, .0 uh, three thousandths of an inch deflection at the tool. Pushing against the x-axis with 80 newton, newtons on the tool, quarter inch shank, um, we get about 2.5 thousandths of an inch. In context, that's about 0.1 millimeters, I believe. That's about the thickness of a sheet of paper. So pretty good. Kind of like got some estimates on how rigid some of the other competing, machi competing machines are. Just for context, we estimate that between the long mill and the alt mill, you're going to see about, let me do the math here, about eight times more rigid on the uh, alt mill. If you check out Daniel's uh, video, he goes a little bit more into why this type of testing for the deflection is important and how it translates into real life results in a CNC machine. If you don't want to get into the nitty gritty details, make sure to check out the videos that are on the blog. Get some real life context on what the alt mill is capable of and we'll continue to share more of that as time goes on. Another thing we're developing, as you guys may know from our previous updates, is a CNC router. Basically uh, a hybrid between the Makita router and a spindle. One issue with the speed control on the router uh, controller, because they're using, I believe, field-oriented control, but we're waiting on the new board to come in this week so we can do the testing on that. Um, based on the testing data that we got from the factory, that should solve the issue and we should be able to get about a thousand watts of cutting power, uh, which is about two to three times more than the Makita. So we're excited for that. Uh, Johan's been working on figuring out the specs for the bearings and the configuration for the bearings, as well as machining some parts to put together the prototype. He's also been uh, testing some of the prototypes for things like noise, heat, power, speed, control, and things like that. So slowly coming together. Once we've validated that the speed control works and the power of the motor, we're able to move on to the next step, which is uh, designing for manufacturing and starting to work through getting it into production. Probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll finish the testing for the router and then start planning out how we're going to produce it at scale. Another thing that's happened this past month is the launch of the new spring-loaded anti-backlash nuts. If you guys don't know, we made the an update to the nuts so that they are self-adjusting. This means that rather than having to tighten the, the screw to make sure you're taking out the backlash, throughout the life of the nut, it'll self-adjust to make sure there's no slop in the nut itself. Not only have we so, so started selling the T8 size, we also have the T12 size, which is one that a lot of people were waiting for. So you can check that on, on, on the store. That being said, we have sold out on all of them and we're waiting on the next batch to finish the production for. The first batch was 200 sets. We should be getting another 800 sets in the next couple of weeks. We wanted to make sure that the first batch was working and we We've been looking for feedback from the people who have installed their uh, T8 and T12 and, uh, spring-loaded anti-backlash nuts to send feedback to our manufacturer and also make sure we work out any kinks. We did a lot of internal testing to make sure that they're working properly as well. And we've provided, we've had to make some tweaks like to re-machine and re-tap some of the nuts here to make sure they work properly. But we share that information with the manufacturer to make sure that they're making them perfect before they even reach our door. Uh, so we believe that the new batch of nuts will be less hassle, will have less hassle than the ones that we had to deal with for the first 200. People are gonna probably ask whether or not um, these nuts will come default with the long mill. There's kind of two things we will want to cross before we can add them directly to the kits. We don't have enough stock right now to put them in the kits. Um, and second, we want to make sure that they work really, really well. Right now, because if the nuts don't work well, the users can use the old nuts. Once we have completely validated that these nuts work properly, and as far as we can tell, they do work properly, we will hold off on putting these in the kits. But it is like our plan and we're working towards making this the default option. The other thing to mention is that we now have a installation videos thanks to Jason for installing the nuts to the machine. 
So make sure to check out our website and our YouTube channel for those videos as well. Super Longboard is now in production and we're expecting the first batch of boards to finish March 20th. That also coincides with our production for the new e-stops, which have the macro buttons, the new cabling, and um, did I miss something? No, I think it's just the uh, e-stops, uh, the e-stop PCBs with the macro buttons and the new cabling that we're waiting on. The control box part housing for the uh, e-stop are all on the way now. So we should see them probably at the end of the week. John and Michael are working on setting up the assembly stations and the QA process for when we get the, the parts. And, and, and Chris has also sent the PCB manufacturer uh, test process to make sure that they are working properly before they get to the uh, office. Other news, um, some of our students have been working on setting up the computer and the touchscreen setup that we've been talking about a little bit so that we can provide an option for the for like a all-in-one ready-to-go computer for controlling your machine. I, because I've been away for the month, I haven't been able to check it out myself. And they've been working on kind of figuring out how to duplicate everything that's on the computer so we can make sure that the customer will get all the programs that they need and also all the features that they want for being able to control the machine as well as figuring out the networking so that people can send the files back and forth from their computer. A lot of little tiny things, but um, you know, working through that. As far as what Chris has told me in terms of what's going on with the SLB, a lot of firmware testing, a lot of tuning for the motors and the drivers, a lot of work on the resources to help people get it set up on their machine. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background, so in the next couple of weeks, we're excited to start shipping the super long boards. And I'm happy to say that all of the boards that we had available, the first 475 boards have been sold. So we'll be making a new batch soon also to keep making more SLBs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video in the next month. And uh, yeah, until next time. Forget about it, I'm not going to play it. <laughs> <laughs>